Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now in my last GarageBand for iOS video, I showed you how you could connect up USB devices to your iPad or your iPhone using a lightning to USB adapter. In particular, this one here where you can power your device at the same time. So in this video, I'm gonna take it up to the next level. We are going to use a powered USB hub to connect multiple devices to our iPad to use at the same time in GarageBand. I'm gonna show you how right now, let's go. Okay, so here we are back again. We have our iPad, but this time we have this device here, a powered USB hub. And this is just a generic Swan brand, but you can use any brand of USB hub, but you can see there that it's actually got a power connection and it's hooked in to, here in Australia, a 240 volt power outlet. On the front here, we've got four USB ports. On the back, we have a mini USB, sorry, micro, micro, mini, one of those <laughs> USB that we can actually use to connect up. So these are usually used for a computer, a PC or a Mac to connect up multiple USB devices. But today, we're actually gonna use it in conjunction with our lightning to USB adapter, and we're going to connect up multiple devices for recording on our iPad here. So let's jump in and do this now. The first thing we need is our micro USB, which we're going to plug in at that end and also then plug that into our lightning to USB adapter. So now what this has got is it's going, it's powered and it's coming through here and we can now plug this end in to our iPad like so. So it's not actually going to power. You can see here it's not powering our iPad, but what it is doing is it's powering these four USB ports. And why is that important? Well, it means that when we plug devices in here now, that they're going to receive power and things like USB keyboards or interfaces and the like, they'd like a lot more power. So especially if you're using an iPhone or an older iPad, you're going to find that you're gonna need a powered USB hub to do this. And even if you're only using one device, it's a good idea to have a USB hub to make sure that you have enough power going into your devices. Okay, let's get into the fun part. Let's bring into the mix my Steinberg UR12, my favorite handy dandy USB audio interface. Now I'm going to need another cable here. So I've grabbed my A to B USB cable. We'll plug into the back there again. And then we're going to plug in here to the USB port. Now, interestingly enough, what we can now do is flick this switch over here to USB powered and turn around and like magic, it is now going to be powered and connected. So there's our message on our iPad saying an audio device is connected. We can turn on monitoring. So we don't need to use the function here using a five volt DC power because we have USB power as well as USB connection running through this hub. So that's actually really handy because it means that we don't have to have a separate mini USB adapter here to power this as well. It can all be powered through this hub because it's all running off of our AC adapter power. Super handy. Now you might be thinking at this point, oh great, we can bring in our friend the Samson Go mic and have two different audio inputs at the same time. Now, unfortunately, that's not gonna happen because this has now replaced the iPad's headphone and audio input. So if we plug this in, it's gonna get very confused. It doesn't support more than one audio interface at the same time. However, what it does support is MIDI at the same time as our audio interface. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I can plug in my MIDI keyboard so that we can be recording audio through our microphone input here, as well as MIDI keyboard sounds at the same time on the same iPad on two separate tracks. So let's do that right now. Okay, so we've moved our setup around a little bit to make room for our keyboard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a USB A to B cable again, and we're gonna flip this around and find our USB port in the back there. Sorry, you can't see that, but if you need to know how to do that, I'll show you that in more detail in the previous video. And then here is our USB end, here is our USB hub. We're gonna plug that into the other port on our USB hub, and now, 
what you'll see is that we have power on our USB device. We have power on our USB interface. We're gonna turn on monitoring up here. And now, if everything has worked correctly, we've got two devices plugged in here. We've got the USB hub plugged into our iPad, and we can now set up two separate tracks to record both a microphone and a keyboard input into here. So this is where once again, the cabling gets a bit intense. And if you're not recording this in front of a camera, it's probably easier, but here is my handy dandy SM57, the best microphone in the world. And I'm going to plug that into my XLR input here. And then I'm gonna set up my audio track over here to make sure that it's using this microphone input. So we're gonna tap over here on the track. We're gonna to go to our settings and we're gonna to go to our channel and make sure it's on input channel one, which it is, so we're good to go. And now, if we tap on there, la 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 la. Yes, we're in there, we're going through there. We've just up our, because we're using a dynamic mic and I usually use condensers. Test one, two, three. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a nice signal, nice level coming through, la, on our dynamic SM57 microphone. So that's very cool. Let's go back here. What we now want to do is add another track. So I've showed you how to do multi-track where if we wanted to go to audio recorder again, where is this? Oh, we'll just find this and just show you this really quickly. If you go to audio recorder again, we can now go to channel here. And if we put input two, we could actually plug a guitar or plug any analog source directly into the instrument jack on the UR12. And we could record two audio tracks at the same time. In fact, we can do, we could do that. Let's just do that for fun. We're not actually gonna record a source, but we'll just go input two. We'll pretend the guitar is playing through this second track, just so I can show you exactly how versatile this is going to be. So we're gonna tap on both of those to make sure they're both recording. So that's what we do for multi-tracking. We make sure that those record lights are on there, but we're not done. Let's tip, tap, tip on add and scroll along to our keyboard. Tap on our keyboard and like magic, our keyboard sound you can see is working. You can't hear it because the output is actually coming out of the Steinberg UR12 and I haven't thought to actually hook up the output so that you can hear that. So you're gonna to have to trust me and you'll be able to see when we go through and record the waveform in a moment. So what I'm doing is I'm holding my SM57. I'll be talking to that. You need to pretend that I'm playing guitar on the other input and I'll be playing some keyboard just here and you'll see that we'll be recording all three of these tracks at the same time. So if we go back to our track here, you can see we can now hit record on all three of these. Now the, the uh, microphone tracks are okay there. You can see they're monitoring. The MIDI monitors by default. So there's no monitoring uh, light on there. The little orange squiggle that we have there that tells us we're monitoring. So what I'm gonna do now you also can't really see that here. I should have recorded the screen here, but there's a number three next to that, uh, sorry, inside that record button. So that's telling us that we're recording three separate tracks here now, all at the same time. Let's hit the record button and see what we can do. So now I'm gonna sing and play the piano. So I'm hitting the piano keys. I'm singing into my SM57 and I'm playing some random chords and now I'm gonna hit stop. Eventually, there we go. Let's go back to here. And what we will see is, there we go, on our top track there, that is our SM57 recording. We then have nothing on this track because we had no guitar plugged in and I can't play because I don't have more than two hands. So if we had a guitar in there, so let's say we had a guitarist playing along with us as well, and then we have our keyboard. So imagine you've got a two-piece act where you've got a keyboard vocalist and a guitarist. You can plug everything in here at once and record your whole duo onto three tracks here without a problem. And if you had a four track or a six track, like I do, you can't see it, but over here I've got my UR44. Um, if you've got that plugged in, then you can record even more tracks, which is really, really cool. What I'll do now is I'll unplug this and I'll just play this back just so that you can hear what has been recorded.
Okay, so we've unplugged from our interface. So now you can see, and I've brought this up a bit closer, you can see the waveforms that we've got here. We've got our audio recorder, we've got what was the guitar, and we've got our piano. So if we play that back now, we can hear what's been recorded. So now I'm gonna sing and play the piano. So I'm hitting the piano keys, I'm singing into my SM57, and I'm playing some random chords, and now I'm gonna hit stop. So there you go. I think that is really awesome. Clearly not the performance and what I recorded there, but the fact that we can connect up a MIDI keyboard, a USB interface and have that flexibility all in this one iPad device just through the magic of this cable and this powered USB hub. And the benefit of this is that if you've ever hit that, this device consumes too much power error message when you've been using something in iOS. This is the way around that. So if your USB keyboard or interface or microphone uses too much power, plug it in via a USB hub and you'll be good to go. So I hope you found this one interesting. This is one of my favorite things that I've discovered in probably the last year in iOS is the ability to do multiple things and plug in multiple devices into your iPad or your iPhone at once. I hope you found it useful. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below and I'll see you next time.